Hi everybody, welcome back to Two News Live at the Aviation Festival, uh, presented by JetBlue Technology Ventures and sponsored by Travel Air. Uh, my name is Martin Cowan, I'm Editorial Director for Two News, thanks for watching. Um, I'm here with uh, Manuel Sabalas, who is the Vice President of Global Sales and Solutions for Peakwork. Now, um, Peakwork is a dynamic packaging engine, which is a gross oversimplification of what it does. So Manuel, maybe just give us a bit more details about what Peakwork's dynamic packaging proposition is. Thanks, thanks a lot. Thanks for having me. Um, well, Peakwork is a technology and uh, software provider, and we are um, providing high performance cash solutions for airlines, for hotel companies, simplifying the way that they can search their office by lowering the pain that they have with growing search traffic and then connecting them to you know, newer distribution channels, providing dynamic packaging on top of that when we unload their data and create high performance search caches for them. Okay, so dynamic packaging clearly has moved from beyond flights plus hotel. It's factoring in other you know, concepts, dynamic pricing and that sort of stuff, so. Absolutely, yes, okay. I agree. Okay, so um, just, just thinking about, you know, we're here at the Aviation Festival. Um, how, how are the airlines approaching dynamic packaging? There's been a lot of, there's been a few sort of airline holiday brands that have sort of come and nearly gone and have come back again. So I'm thinking of Ryanair holidays and EasyJet holidays mm -hmm. is still around. BA holidays is doing fairly well, I understand. So I'm just wondering what the, what the conversation you're having with the airlines is around the dynamic yeah. packaging at the moment. I mean. What we see currently is a trend that, that's coming back to revive the airline holidays business as part of an important and growing ancillary discussion that the airlines are having. And um, of course we see with, with EasyJet newly launched Ryanair or revived Ryanair yeah. that this is coming uh, again stronger and you see that you know airlines are taking this more serious now and, and you see it with EasyJet that the CEO mm. uh, is, is pronouncing it as a very important part of their business and a growth factor is dynamic packaging for EasyJet, yeah. for instance. So you see there's a trend that, that airlines are, are coming back again with that and taking it more serious. Okay, so you mentioned sort of EasyJet there. I mean, as, as the, the VP of Global Sales and Solutions, presumably you're talking to airlines outside of Europe. I'm just wondering, what, what, are, there, are there any regions that are particularly engaged with the idea of dynamic packaging? Mm. I mean, we're quite, quite familiar with it in, in Europe, but I mean, I'm just mm. thinking about you know, Asia Pacific and Latin America. I mean, what, what's their airlines from those regions? What's their take on, mm -hmm. you know, packaging and holiday brands? Yeah, so what we see is a trend uh, globally that, that goes into more this dynamic packaging components into a more flexible approach from these airlines. Let's take Latin America. I mean, there are some prominent names like Latam Airlines who have their own travel organization with packages, which is Latam Travel. They okay. even have brick and mortar agencies which sell, the, uh, yeah. the, which sell their, their packages. So it's not that new even to uh, Latin American markets. In Asia Pacific, it's a, a bit different. Um, um, well, I think yesterday or today it was announced that Singapore Airlines signed with hotel beds for dynamic packaging. So these guys are taking it more and more serious because they see there's a growing demand for, you know, dynamically packaging this up and cross-selling not only the flight product, but really providing their end clients um, more choice out of one hand in, in, in the retail area. Okay. Um, so that's the, the regions. Okay, that's an interesting with the, I, I must have missed that press release from Hotel Bears. But I mean, <laughs> I'm just thinking within the, within the corporate structure of the airlines, who, who, who makes the decisions around the dynamic pricing? I mean, is it revenue? Is it e-commerce? Is it marketing? I mean, so when Pete works out there talking to airlines, mm -hmm. who are you, who's your point of contact within the, the airline organization. Uh, you, you can see it's quite interesting when, when the discussion is coming more from an e-commerce perspective, then there's quite a resistance to it because the classical e-commerce person in an airline is interested to just sell their flight as best converting it as possible. Mm -hmm. So, but if it comes from a revenue management perspective or a distribution uh, perspective and strategy, this is where we see um, it's, it's more successful when we talk to these people in airlines to launch dynamic packages. Okay. Um, we, we know of an airline that, that has, for instance, um, an e-commerce person that is only incentivized on the conversion of flight only. So he has no interest to sell a package on the flight side, but rather to just distribute the flight content. So it's quite funny to see that, you know, the differences in the departments when it's revenue, 
distribution strategy, it's, it's very interesting. If it's pure e-commerce, it's quite challenging to, okay, to get the foot in the door with the airline partners. That's quite interesting. I mean, and um, you know, Pete, I know you work with a, a, a number of airlines and, and businesses outside airlines as well, but I'm just wondering, how, what's the approach? So when you've got a, you know, an ultra low cost carrier, you know, mm -hmm. coming to talk to you compared to somebody like Singapore Airlines. I mean, with the, the full service carriers and the low cost and the hybrids, I mean, what's, what sort of, is there anything sort of different in how they approach the, the concept of packaging? Yeah, absolutely. The, the, what we see is, is a shift that the newly founded and also um, arrived low cost carriers have a more technical approach to the products that we sell, to dynamic packaging itself. So they rather get there from a technical perspective because they know what they want to achieve from the product side, more or less. Yeah. And the GDS carriers, the legacy carriers, you see that, that it's more like you know discussions around, okay, I want the standalone best solution in the market and you need to build it explicitly for me. And the low cost carrier comes from a technical perspective and says like, okay, what's out there out of the box and, and how can I get fast to market and try things with you? The, okay. These are the two approaches in there. So the low cost carriers are more sort of They'll, they'll take it and they'll, they'll sort yeah. it out, but they want it done quickly, whereas exactly. the full service carriers are more studied and they, okay. Yes. Okay, so um, you talked about sort of EasyJet holidays and I missed uh, uh, Mr. Lundgren's speech earlier, but you know, you, you gave the impression that he was talking about mm. the holidays brand being a big revenue driver. I mean, I know BA Holidays talks very positively in its financials about yeah. its holidays. I mean, but are the, are, the, are the airline holiday brands a threat to OTAs? Well, I think the, the current distribution world, as of today, is, you know, when you take away the dominant ones, like the Booking.com group and yeah. the Expedia group, then maybe the rest needs to think about what is their USP beside reselling others. And yeah. to these smaller ones, I think, in midterm, an airline holidays brand, which is done right and with, which has a lot of traction, like the BAs and EasyJet yeah. and maybe Ryanair's of this world, can become a certain threat but at the end, I would say that, that the big OTAs don't need to, to fear that. Yeah. Maybe a, a, a mid-size OTA that is you know, uh, not having that big USP in, in, in terms of, of, of the um, distribution reach. Yeah, I mean, that's a phrase I haven't heard for a while. It's this idea of, of uh, pe you know, people being sort of squeezed in the middle and what do these med medium-sized OTAs do to, to, to give them a sort of USP and a position in the market when you've got the giants and then you've got the sort of the nimble small scale OTAs, you've got these people in the middle, I mean, where do they, where, where do they go, apart from being acquired, I, I, I'm not sure. So, I mean, you talked about the, the medium term. I'm just wondering in terms of, you know, if we were to have the, the, a conversation about packaging in, in, in five years' time, I mean, what, how would it be, be different? Would it be a sort of different product? Would the tech have changed materially? I mean, what would, what would it be different? Well, in, in this perspective, um, I have to be a little bit careful because we, we said, I think, ages ago already yeah. that, you know, the package travel will die out yeah. and, uh, <laughs> and, and, and that people won't go so much to travel agencies yeah. anymore. And, and, but what we see still is, is or, or again, is, is really that the end consumers get more tech savvy, are more tech savvy, and that the packaging itself is done more in a, in a different way. So what we envision in five years is um, in a distribution way that they are more middlemen cut out in the distribution. So there's more these direct distribution models yeah. with people who own the product, who distribute it, like in airline holidays. Yeah. And then from a, from a way that packages are presented, it will be much more flexible than it is today. And, and we are starting already to, to launch these things where you can, you know, create a package out of the single components yeah. in a true dynamic packaging way and not to have your seven days fixed duration yeah. package, including a transfer to Majorca. Yeah, okay. Um, um, I know we're at the, at the Aviation Festival and I'm slightly nervous therefore asking about hotels, but why not? So, I mean, hotel, hotels are also looking at these sort of hotel mm -hmm. brands. I know there's a Marriott Vacations powered by Expedia. So I'm just wondering, is, are the sort of hotel holiday brands a threat to airline holiday brands? Well, I think, <laughs> I mean, the be best scenario is that there is a you know peaceful coexistence. Yeah. The question is if, if if they have both the, I mean they they surely have brands 
who are prominent enough to yeah. to threaten each other yeah. but at the end of it, of the day they need each other to to fulfill you know bringing the people there yeah. or having the guests and passengers stay in the hotels so i yeah. think it's not a real threat and um, but it's it's surely an interesting shift in the distribution again yeah. i think the ones that are suffering not major in a major way but can be the otas because again that's a direct distribution model yeah. with no middleman that distributes the package on behalf of Marriott for instance. Yeah, no, I mean I've I've always thought that you know, the hotel holiday brand I think is the, is the next big thing because you spend so on a week's vacation you spend 2 hours on the flight and 7 days in the hotel. Sure. So why why aren't more hotels thinking about pulling in a flight fee rather than the other way around? But, Doing it the way around. Yeah, yeah exactly. No, and yeah. and we see that there's a big demand for it. We are in, 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 adva in advanced talks about this. It's a thing that's coming up now because, yeah, it's a logical thing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Well, listen, Manuel, thank you very much for taking the time to join us. I always like talking to Pete Work, a good uh, friend and partner of Teen News over the years. So thanks for making the time to join us. Uh, this is Martin Cowan. I'm editorial director for Teen News. I'm saying goodbye, but I'll be back shortly. Thank you very much.